I'm cat crazy, and I'm not the only one. Over 13 million people across the UK, including yours truly, share their homes and their hearts with a furry ball of feline mischief. But with their famously dangerous sense of curiosity and their incredible ability to get into dark spaces and high places, cats often end up in need of our help. In this series, we'll meet cats close to catastrophe. The animal rescuers who dedicate their lives to saving these amazing animals. We got up! And members of the public that are there to help them. I didn't know what the conditions was like up there. Every day, I prayed that she was alive. I have Brody here for you. Hey, Brody. I'll experience firsthand what life is like treating ill and injured moggies. But I hear that you have been in the wars at one of the country's busiest animal hospitals. No pressure. Quite a lot of pressure. I don't want to be a vet anymore. <laughs> we'll meet cats that push the boundaries and challenge what we think is possible of our furry friends. Tula's changed our lives in so many ways. And I'll bring you the science behind what makes your beloved kitty one of the most impressive creatures on the planet. Coming up... In total, there are around 17 cats. Inspector Hershey Bowl gets to grips with a flat so full of felines, it's bursting at the seams. This one's got two kittens with her. They've bred out of control. Inspector Kira Benham rescues a scared, fluffy feral in urgent need of help. I can see that she's been bleeding up here. Oh, good Lord. And I become a tiny orphaned kitten's mum. She's hungry. She's very hungry. But it's not all cuteness and cuddles. Normally, her mum would lick her genitals <laughs> and it would stimulate her I'm to get her. <laughs> I'm up for anything, Eden. <laughs> There's no denying that kittens like these are pretty cute. No wonder we bring a few of them into our homes. But how many cats is too many? And what happens when your colony of cats gets out of hand? <laughs> like this. <laughs> in the Midlands, Inspector Hershey Bowl is on her way to an address in Birmingham that has become overrun with cats. In total, there are around 17 cats. A colleague of mine has um, liaised with this, uh, this gentleman because he can't cope with them. I think the situation's got out of hand because he's, he's effectively had cats living in a flat and they've, um, they've sort of bred out of control. When it comes to breeding, cats are in a league of their own. And if Hershey doesn't intervene, the situation will get even worse. Cats can get pregnant at four months old and they're pregnant for nine weeks. It's actually frightening how quickly they will breed. Each year, the RSPCA gets hundreds of calls about problems relating to multi-cat households, where the number of cats has got out of control. With so many moggies, Hershey is gonna need a hand. A representative from the housing association that manages the flat is on the scene and has arranged to take a couple of the cats to another charity. The cat's owner is waiting outside the flat when they arrive. Hello, my name's Hershey. Do you mind if I just have a quick look? I just sort of need to know what I'm dealing with. And when Hershey gets inside the building, the problem is bigger than she thought. Hello, sweetheart. Hi. Hello, kitty. There's 20 cats. This many cats in a small flat can be a breeding ground for cat flu, which can make them very ill or worse. If Hershey can't get them out, the problem will only escalate. Come another six months, you'll end up with 50 cats in here. Thankfully, the owner agrees to sign the cats over, so Hershey, with help from animal collection officer Vic, starts the mammoth task of clearing the feline-filled flat. Catching them, Vic, is going to be a joy. The problem with cats are, they're such good hiders, <laughs> and they do make our life difficult then. Hello, darling. Just come on. Sorry. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Oh! OK, pin. Yay! Well done. 
Hershey starts bringing out cat after cat. Come on, you monkeys. And for some, it looks like she's got there in the nick of time. Juveniles, aren't they? Yeah. I know, darling. So these are around four months old. Um, so they're, they're a good age, really, to start neutering, because that's when they start to breed. Neutering will put an end to the kitten explosion, but there are already some recent arrivals. This one's got two kittens with her. And one tiny black kitten is missing its mum. I'm having a problem identifying who the mother of this kitten is. And it's about four weeks old, roughly, I'd say, give or take. Young kittens are reliant on their mother's milk to give them the nutrients they need. Her sheet needs to find the tiny kitten a new mum. But for now, her priority is to break the news to the local vets that their practice is about to get a whole lot busier. Hi, Laura, it's Hershey. Hello. Laura. Hershey. All it is is that I'm taking some cats out of a property, but they'll need triaging. So there's eight, 18. How many? 18. Are you winding me up? No, no, of course not. I'm not answering, I promise you, I'm not winding you up. With the last few cats out, her, she can get them on their way. They seem a bit thin, some have a little bit of fur loss, but they're more skittish than anything, they're panicking a little bit. Hopefully they'll settle down. I mean, it's difficult for them, isn't it, when people are strangers are trying to catch them. Fingers crossed, Hershey's got to them before anything more serious can develop. We'll catch up with the cat shortly. <laughs> Inspector Hershey Bowl has just rescued a staggering 17 cats that were living in one flat in Birmingham. They're cute, aren't they, look? Look at the little ears. Cats from multi-moggy households often fall victim to feline flu, so it's important that vet Mel Kavanagh gives them all a thorough checking over. This is a um, mother cat with two kittens. They're fine, they look good, they're nice solid. It's no small task. Oh, shush, 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 shush. It's all right. Come on, sweetheart. But astonishingly, so far, they've all been given a clean bill of health. She looks fine, nice little catcher. No signs of cat flu, like ulcers no. or any issues like that, is there? For a multi-cat household, they, they, they are in good order, really, and, and better, than, better than you would expect. But they still can't identify the mother of the tiny black kitten. The problem now is that we have a four-week-old kitten and it hasn't had any milk. And I don't know when it last had milk. It's, it's hungry, it's been crying a lot. While all the cats get settled in the cattery, Hershey needs to decide what to do with him. A lack of food in the first few weeks can be life-threatening for a kitten. They need their mother's milk to provide them with nutrients and antibodies. Without it, they can become weak and prone to infections. Hershey has a plan. We're going to see if that mother cat that already has two kittens will accept another kitten. Because she's already nursing two kittens that are two weeks old. Um, be interesting to see if she'll just take it on. And she's too, too busy eating. She's not really noticed too much and she's not been that bothered. I think if we can mingle her two cats around it, she might just accept it and, and let it feed. She's only got two of her own kittens on, so she'll have plenty of milk. And now she'll be getting regular food here and as much food as she wants to eat. She'll have plenty of milk, Gordon, won't she, yeah, eventually? Yeah, plenty, yeah. A mum cat is occasionally open to caring for other kittens that are around the same age as her own litter. So what's the kitten doing? It's, it's had a little muzzle, it's looking so right. Some mums can take a couple of hours to accept a new kitten, but it looks like this little lad is already making himself comfortable. It's been a very long day, but it's, been, it's gone really well. We've now managed to get the mother cat with two kittens to take that on as a, and act like a surrogate mother. So it just means that I know that it's going to get nursed, it's going to get love from this mother cat, and she'll let it suckle. So I'm really pleased about that. As for the rest of this menagerie of moggies, they'll all be neutered and vaccinated before going up for rehoming. I 
I'm so pleased that the little kitty found a family, but not all cats are quite so lucky. If a kitten doesn't have a mum, it's up to the staff working at the animal centres around the country to take on that role. And today I'm at Harmsworth Animal Hospital meeting vet Eden Hermson to find out just what that involves. Hi, Eden. Hi, Jo. What are you up to? Uh, so I'm just making some kitten milk for pumpkin. So can I see him? Of her? course, her. Her, her right. little pumpkin, the tortoise shell. Oh, good lord. Oh She's god. very, very tiny. How old is she? She's about two and a half weeks old. Pumpkin was found uh, by a member of public in their garden, apparently on her own. So they brought her to us and we've been caring for her ever since. Oh. Kittens need their mums for more than just food, as I'm about to find out. We do need to put gloves on for this bit okay. because um, it's the, the fun bit. So we need to toilet her. We need, we need to toilet her? Yeah. Well, can't she, can she not toilet herself? No, she can't. So normally her mum would lick her genitals <laughs> and it would stimulate her I'm to you. <laughs> I'm up for anything, Eden. <laughs> If you show me we're, now. We're, we're not quite that dedicated. Um. <laughs> so how are we going to do it then? OK, so instead of doing it ourselves, we yeah. uh, just use some damp cloth. Come on here, tiddly. <laughs> we There we go. OK. Right. So um, it's really straightforward. Yeah. Lift up their tail and it's just a nice little up gentle motion, OK? And if you can see, she starts weeing fairly quickly. Unfortunately, they don't sit still for you when you do this. No. Yeah, I'd be meowing if someone was doing this to me <laughs> as well. So she's done her wee. She's wing. done a wee. Yep. Oh, phew, what a so, relief. <laughs> um, so now we can give her her bottle. Right. OK? It's a powdered formula that has everything that the kitten needs. Right. Uh, and at this stage, we're giving her six and a half mils. OK. So, God, that's nothing, is it? I know, but we do this every three hours right. all okay. day. So it does add up. So we'll just pop her on the... pop her nice and flat. Right. OK, and I've just got to keep her head a little bit still. There we go. There we go. So it's easy. She's hungry. She's very hungry. And look, she's Should holding I... your little finger. Would you like her... to take over? Yeah, thanks. So they like just having support on their front paws. OK. Yeah, there we go. For dedicated kitten carers like Eden, taking on a mewing mini moggy like this can lead to serious red eye. We take her home every night and I'm up every three hours to give her her bottle. And oh, my Lord, that it's... is some commitment. Yeah, and we generally have them for at least four to six weeks. So we'll be bottle feeding her for at least another week and a half. You must have um, developed a real bond with Pumpkin, have you? Yeah, definitely. She's you very, very to special. Be little baby and come I home wish, with you. I wish do I could you? do that, but I would take them all home. Oh, so oh I think she's finished. Yeah. It kind of seems like she is fairly happy with what she's had. That's a, oh, she's, you can hear her purring now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aww. So she's very so content. She's, happy. she's very good. happy now. Right, uh, Pumpkin, I think you're probably tired. You need to go to bed. I'm sorry I'm not your mum. OK, so pop her in, yeah? Yep, yeah, we'll pop her in. OK. Ooh. In you go. There we go. Night, night. Cat owners, it's time to face the truth. You need your cat more than it needs you. There are thousands of feral cats in the UK surviving in the wild, but occasionally even they need our help. Oh, hi, is that Andrew? Hello, my love, I'm calling from the RSPCA. In Yorkshire, Inspector Kira Benham 
is following up on a call about an injured feral cat called Esme. What's the situation with it? I understand it's got a poorly foot, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I noticed two days ago it was limping and then this morning I noticed its paw was really badly swollen. Feral cats usually reject human contact, but Esme has developed a rare bond with Andrew, who's been feeding her for the last few months. Today, injured and in pain, she's ventured into Andrew's house. It doesn't come in the house, yeah. right. on the wind windowsill and it won't move. It's obviously not well, but it's also a little bit of blood. For a feral cat to go into a house, there must be something seriously wrong. Feral cats can be unpredictable. They're not like normal domestic cats. and We have to treat them as if they're a wild animal because they're not used to human handling. Right. I think he said go around the back. Hello, you all right? Oh. She's a lovely cat. I've never tried to pick her up, though, because she's not into that at all. I wonder if she's been bitten by another cat, you know, because it's very common on paws. And when Andrew tried to look at the sore paw, Esme gave him a nasty bite. Have you been to get that checked out? I'm going to get a tetanus this afternoon. Yeah, because they can swell up really bad and cause quite bad, serious infections. Kira is going to need to approach the poorly pussy very carefully. Hello. Hey, are you frightened? Yeah, I'm watching that stair lady. Is it her left front paw? It is. Yeah, I can see it's quite swollen now. It's a big paw, that one. You can see that she's been bleeding up here. Kira needs to assess Esme's injury, but doesn't want to stress the already scared Moggy out. I want to see that finger, but I just... If she's already prone to being a little bit that way out, I'm just going to go and get the means to do it nicely and without me getting got. It's going to be safer for Kira and kinder for Esme to take her to a vet, where she can be sedated and checked over thoroughly. But it's not going to be easy. It's quite dangerous when dealing with ferals. The gentleman's already been bitten. I don't want to go down the same route. Cat bites can be really dangerous, especially if left untreated. Uh, there's a lot of nasty bacteria in a cat's mouth. I have known people that have lost fingers and limbs over it. I'll grab my grasper and a blanket and we'll look to try and get her in the basket in the nicest possible way. Graspers are always used as a last resort and in this situation, Kira has no other choice if she wants to avoid getting a nasty bite herself. It looks quite distressing at the time, but as long as you can minimise the time that they're on the grasper, um, it saves me becoming injured in the process. Kira has to prepare herself for what could be a very tricky manoeuvre. And I'm going to set myself up over there with the basket open and I'm just going to grasp her into the basket, hopefully. As easy as that, she says. But we'll soon see if my years of service have proved beneficial, won't we? If this goes wrong, she could get bitten or badly scratched by the feral cat. All right, baby girl. Esme isn't keen on being captured. Just somebody open that for me, please. And in the commotion, our cameraman has to jump in and help out. <sighs> all right, sweetheart. All right, darling. All right, all right, all right. Easy, girl. There we go. Easy, girl. There's a good girl. I think you can see why she did me now. Yeah, she's not a happy lady. Are you, sweetheart? I'm just going to pop a, uh, a cover over as well so that she's not stressed while she's in basket. There's a good lass. Kira can finally get this feisty feline to a vet to get the injured paw checked. I'll give you a bell once we've found out what's, what the cause of it is yeah. uh, and what the, uh, the prognosis is, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Is that OK? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, lovey. Cheers. Bye. Now. Bye. Come on, sweetie. Here we go. 
Now then. I'd love to have got older and had a good look at a paw here in situ. We need to get her sedated so it's um, less stressful for her and for us as well and less chance of us becoming injured. Right, sweetie pie, let's go. While Andrew gets his bike checked out at the hospital, Kira will try to get to the cause of Esme's poorly paw. Coming up, we join the search for a rare wild cat on the verge of extinction. Oh, I've got him. And I have a high old time as I find out why our feline friends go crazy for catnip. The police call it cat cannabis. The smell is very pungent, it's very strong. <laughs> <laughs> In Yorkshire, Inspector Kira Benham has just rescued Esme, a feral cat with a badly swollen and painful front paw. Hi there. Are you all right? Esme's already bitten homeowner Andrew, so Kira was unable to examine her at the property and has brought her to be checked out by vet Iona. This one this is one. sad. Yeah. Oh, sweetheart. I just don't know how. I mean, I'll see how. Is she, yeah, is it her? Mm -hmm. Good girl. Yeah, she's quite wary-eyed, isn't she? Yeah. Feral cats are unpredictable. Iona needs to sedate Esme so she can take a proper look. Right, sweetheart. Thanks to Kira's special cage, she's able to pull Esme into position. Good girl. Good girl. There we go. There we are. Keeps yeah. a good one. Go sleepy, sweetie. Good girl. And it doesn't take long until Esme is feeling a little less wild at heart. Yeah. Oh, well and truly sleepy Where's now, little lady. Oh, yeah. With Esme out for the count, Iona's able to take a good look at that paw, and it's not pretty. It's quite swollen, isn't it? Mm. Ooh, a nice bit of pus coming oh, out there. That's where it is. So there's that bit just in there. Oh, yummy. Lovely. And another smaller one just at the top of a dew claw there. See, yeah, there's a good good bit of pus in there. The pus is actually the body's way of trying to kind of close off all the bacteria oh. and infection. The swelling around it um, then has an effect on the rest of the foot. Um, so she'll definitely be sore. Poor Esme. She must be in so much pain, it's not surprising that she bit the hand that feeds her. Right, I'll just um, grab a pair of gloves to clean that up. It's consistent with a, what would seem to be a cat bite injury, uh, where she's probably been fighting with another cat. Got little scuffs on her cause. That may be an indicator that she's been in a scrap as well. Cos when the backing off and getting defensive, they'd sort of dig, dig the claws and especially they've gone to attack or in, even in defence. Definitely had a brawl with something. The lady. She's not good this fighting malarkey, you know. It looks nasty, but Iona won't be able to tell how bad the wound is until she gives it a good clean. Let's try and make sure we get all the pus that we can get out of it. Just the release of pressure. There's a good bit there. Oh, yeah. Ugh. I think that's the majority of that one out. Yeah. I'll just check and see whether there's anything on the other side of that pad. I think you've got it, haven't you? Yeah, I think that's the worst of it, definitely. And the pad looks quite clean. Almost just skin deep, that one. This is just a disinfectant, but it's just trying to get it as as deep in, into that abscess, just so that we know we've cleaned and flushed the whole thing out. Good girl. All right, sweetie. Make you feel better, this will. It's coming out pretty clear. Hmm. It's a good sign. Ideal, really. But no, that's looking lots better now. Yeah, it looks loads better, doesn't it? Yeah. That'll make her feel a bit more comfortable then. Cool. Um, Hopefully, she'll make okay. a full recovery. As Esme is feral, it could be hard for her to keep the wound clean, 
and it could easily become infected again. So Iona gives her a shot of antibiotics. It's an injection that lasts a couple of weeks. It's the best bet, really, because otherwise um, trying to get antibiotics into her every day will be tricky. Oh, all right, so you tell her now. It's the antibiotic. Feral cats are normally spayed when they're brought to a vet, so they can't breed. But the nick on Esme's ear means it has already been done, so all Iona needs to do now is wake Esme up. This is a reversal to the sedation, so it just means that she wakes up a bit quicker rather than having to sleep it all off. She's not going to come around instantly, is she? It's not that quick. I think I'd get her back in that cage quick if I were you, just in case. There we go. Yeah. She's already coming round. Look at yeah. her. So she says, oh, yeah. yeah. She says, I'm on my way. Right, Missy Lady, let's get you back and gone. After the age of around two months, it can be more difficult to domesticate a cat, so it's often kinder for feral cats to be released back into the wild. Kira is taking Esme back to Andrew's garden, where she normally lives. I think she's just going to bolt. <laughs> Come on, baby girl. Are you ready? Thought she might. <laughs> Scamper off. Well, that's good, though. She's uh, fairly compassmentous after the sedation, so that's a good sign. Yeah, really pleased with that. It's, it's one of the nicest parts of our job, to be able to uh, resolve it to the point where you can release the animal on the same day. Good job, job. Hopefully that won't be the last time Andrew sees Esme and that nasty wound heals up soon. We often think of feral cats as being wild, but that's nothing compared to their cousins, the indigenous Scottish wildcat. With just an estimated 35 left living in the Scottish Highlands, it's one of the rarest animals on the planet. And one man fighting to save it from extinction is Dr. Paul O'Donoghue from Wildcat Haven, a sanctuary for the wildcat. This animal is in dire straits, and we need to save it. It's been in this country for thousands and thousands of years. It's a solitary predator. It's a fierce animal. It's reputed to be untamable, and it, it stalks and prowls the forests, making its living. It's so endangered. Some people think it's extinct. But we've got to show the evidence that it's not. The cat lives on the west coast of Scotland, but recently there have been reported sightings of it on the east coast too. It's really important now to identify whether there are wild cats there. If there are, we need to protect them, because without protection, the future's bleak. Paul is collecting fellow conservationist Kevin Bell who's been following the Scottish wildcats for the last three years. All right, man. Kevin has set up a number of cameras in the area, and today they're going to see if there's any evidence of the wildcat, which certainly isn't your typical tabby. So wildcats are very different to domestic cats. They're much bigger. They're adapted to this wild environment. They've got a really thick coat. They've got a long tail to help protect them in the winter. They've got a higher brain capacity, so they're much more intelligent than domestic cats. They have to be. They live in this beautiful but very extreme environment. Their numbers originally dropped after being hunted by the Victorians. These days, it's actually domestic cats that pose the biggest threat. The two main threats wildcats face are disease transfer, so they can get all the diseases that domestic cats can get. But the main threat is hybridization. They will interbreed with domestic cats and they're going extinct through genetics. They're being bred out of existence. Some of the movement-sensitive cameras have been out in the forest for over a month, so the guys are hoping that one's picked up a shot of the mysterious Moggy. All right, then. Let's get this laptop out, see yeah. what we've got. It was hoping. Very exciting. Let's check this camera. The moment of truth. And it's just a pity, the image, you know, with the, the actual amount of rain, it's just kind of steamed up the lens. 
There's nothing on that. It's, it's no. a shame. OK, let's try the other one that we've had out. It's not looking good, and the second camera's in bad shape too. OK, that camera's failed. OK. That's the nature of the beast, yeah, unfortunately. These, these cameras that's get gone. whacking. Will it be third time lucky for Paul and Kev? Can they prove the Scottish wildcat exists on the East Coast? We've got 13 images. Dark from the first one. Oh, dear. Oh, lovely deer. Are well, there animals, animals around? There's a badger. <laughs> yeah, badger, there's a badger on a tree. <laughs> a tree's done. <laughs> that's a deer coming through. Oh, again. yeah, beautiful. Oh, <gasps> I'm going to. Oh, God, we got wow. a wild cat. We got a wild cat. That's beautiful. That's the real deal. That's a, that's a wild cat. Jesus, man, that's amazing. That is. This animal hits all the key markings represented in a pure Scottish wild cat. It's got the thick ring tail, the dorsal stripe that stops at the base of the tail, beautiful tiger stripes, and it's got that stature. That's unmistakable. It's a beautiful, beautiful cat. Some people claim that pure wildcats don't exist. Well, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done, mate. Thanks, man. It's certainly a great result for Paul and Kev, and for the wildcat itself. Now they know they're in the area, they can take steps to keep them safe. We now know for a fact that there's pure Scottish wildcats on the east coast of Scotland. The next step is to find out, are there others here? And then after that, how do we protect them? And we do that by working with pet owners to ensure that they neuter and disease test their cats. It's drop dead gorgeous, it's got the swagger. That camera was there for five weeks and it came through for 40 seconds. That's it. They are living ghosts. What's that, man? Brilliant. That's absolutely perfect, eh? Perfect. It's a beauty. It's a long way off. But maybe one day, with the continued work of people like Paul and Kev, the wildcat will be a familiar sight in the Scottish forests once again. Meet Ronnie and Reggie. These two have had an awful start in life. Just four months old, they have both lost an eye and have been here at South or Cattery waiting to be rehomed for weeks without a single inquiry. It's important to keep the pair sociable and used to human contact and responsible for making sure these moggies don't turn into the mobsters they're named after is volunteer Jill, who has a secret weapon in the quest to find these two a new home. Hi, Jill. Hello, Joe. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Now, you're one of the volunteers here. I am. How long have you been here for? Nearly seven happy years. Wow. And what would you say your primary jobs here are? I think preparing the animal uh, for the outside world. Right. Um, helping them to become more confident so eventually they will interact with lovely people who want to adopt a cat from here. Now, what is this that we have here? This is catnip. It's an extra pleasure for cats. It helps to um, relax the cats. Brings them out of themselves yes. a bit. Yes. Happy and relaxed cats are more rehomeable. But how does catnip actually work? Here's our resident science buff, Dr Lauren Finker, to tell us more. So today we're going to be talking about catnip. It's a plant from the mint family that seems to drive cats crazy. What we know about catnip is that it's the essential oil nepalactalone which causes the characteristic high in cats. And this is found in the stem and also the leaves of the plant. What cats will do is actually try to bruise the plant to release some of this essential oil. Sensory elements within their nasal passage will respond to the catnip and then this will send messages to, to the brain and cause a behavioural change. What we'll see cats do is often sniffing and chewing, licking, rolling around. And we think that catnip can be quite um, potentially pleasurable for cats, so it's a way that sort of stimulates them. They're definitely attracted to the plant in nature, so it's something that they see as a, an exciting experience. So it can form part of their enrichment. 
Ronnie and Reggie certainly seem keen. What do they like about it? The police call it cat cannabis, so whatever cannabis does for humans. Have you not had <laughs> cannabis before, Jill? <laughs> no, I would not take no, cannabis. Okay. Maybe I should try some. It's kind of like mint, really, isn't it? Mm. Have you ever had any before? No. Would it go in a salad? I, I reckon it would. It's rather nice, actually. But these two are definitely getting more out of it than me. Go for it. The smell is very pungent. It's very strong. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see them having such a fun time, isn't, isn't it? it? Isn't it, Joe? Yeah. That worked a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy yourself and I wish you good luck for the future and your brother. Hopefully, after weeks of waiting, these two little gangsters will get snapped up soon. Still to come, we catch up with Esme, the feral cat that bit the hand that fed her. The first sort of three or four days, she was still limping on it and it was swollen quite badly. We're really concerned. And we meet the cat who got stuck into a cheeky snack in more ways than one. You can see that she's been bleeding up here. Earlier, Inspector Kira Benham rescued Esme, a scared and injured feral cat that had bitten the owner of the house she was hiding in. See why she did now. Yeah, she's not a happy lady. Are you, sweetheart? Esme had an infected paw, and after being treated by vet Iona, she was released back into the garden where she normally lives. Thought she might <laughs> scamper off. Two months on, and believe it or not, Andrew is still recovering from Esme's bite. A little bit numb on the thumb where I've got some nerve damage, but uh, now it will be fine. She don't think that a cat bite would lead to something uh, quite serious, really. I was quite surprised when I went to the hospital. I just thought I'd go for a tetanus and ended up being two days having surgery and uh, physiotherapy. Didn't realize that it could be quite uh, as bad as it could be. We have a domestic cat, a pet cat, and she's bit us a few times. I now understand the difference between a playful bite and actually a, a proper bite. Obviously, the cat, Esme, she was, uh, she was in pain and she was scared, and uh, so don't hold it against her. Clearly not. Andrew, or Saint Andrew, as I may start calling him, still feeds the moggy that hospitalised him three times a day. Esme! Esme! She's there, look. So you can see the two, the two eyes under the gap in the fence. She's actually there. Hello. Come on. Andrew is on the mend. But how has Esme been? The first sort of three or four days, she was still limping on it, and it was swollen quite badly. We were really concerned. If, if an infection takes hold, it's not going to end in a nice way, is it? But then, over the following week, that the swelling really went down, she was walking normally, uh, and now she's absolutely fine. <laughs> it sounds awful, this, but it's just nice to know every day that she's still alive. You know that she's healthy and she's OK, that's, that's, that's good. Ah, oh, what a lovely man and a very lucky cat. And there's more good news. Remember Ronnie and Reggie, the gorgeous one-eyed brothers who were waiting to be rehomed but hadn't had a single inquiry? Well, today, I am hand-delivering them to their new owners, James and Becky Bridges. Hello. 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 James and Becky, isn't Hi. it? It is. Nice to meet you. Thank I you. brought your boys Thank for you. you. Well, cats. Um, <laughs> so, Ronnie and Reggie are here. How have you ended up at this point? How did you um, get to know about Ronnie well, and Reggie? Well, I adopted kittens from the RSPCA before. 
We had a litter of three black and whites. I've now only got one oh. little girl left. And um, just recently, I was just visiting the website and Ronnie caught my eye. No pun intended, I'm sure. And then I saw that they came together. So I turned around to James and said, you have to have a look. And I think within 10 minutes, we'd reserved them. And subject to home check, a few days later, we arranged for them to come home. What about this? They both lost an eye. That wasn't an issue for you. No. You were happy to... Part of the appeal. We like ah, quirky. Yeah. I have to say, they're gorgeous, they aren't they? Are I'm I very know. envious of I know. you. I think you're going to have such a lovely time with them. I was just so shocked when they said that they'd been here a month and not one person had made an inquiry, but then good for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Well, congratulations. Thank I you. hope you have a lovely time with them. I'm sure we will. It's Can't wait to get to them home you. and let them loose to create chaos. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well. All yours. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. May we go home? Hmm? Yes. Oh, oh can't wait. Bless, look at them. Pick them up carefully, Daddy. Good luck, Ronnie and Reggie. Behave yourselves, you hoodlums. Speaking of happy endings, you'll be pleased to know that the little black kitten Hershey found all by himself was accepted by his new mum. Mum is very content with her kittens and her little foster kitten. He's coming on well and will be ready for rehoming soon. And to end the show, here's a YouTube clip of an amazing rescue from across the world. This greedy kitty in Israel thought he had it in the can when he spotted the chance for an extra bite to eat. But he made a real dog's dinner of it and got his head stuck. Thankfully, a local resident with a can-do attitude and a pair of pliers was able to help. And how did the kitty thank his rescuer? Yours, yours. By running off, of course. Typical cat.